Hello, everyone. Uh, we are live. Welcome to another Travel China live live stream. Um, if you missed my last one, which was in Wuhan, we went to Wuhan virtually together. Basically, the concept behind this whole live stream series is, you know, none of us are really traveling right now, including myself. I'm currently streaming to you live from uh, my parents' house here in Sydney, Australia. I am not back in China. So yeah, none of us are really traveling. So I thought, why don't we all travel online together? So for this travel experience, you don't even have to leave your couch to travel with me today. So get comfy, get some snacks. That's very important. You're going to want snacks. Uh, there's going to be some serious food porn in this video. So get ready. <laughs> and uh, hopefully this will be a really fun, um, happy, good live stream. Um, so just to clarify, once again, I am not back in China. I am here in Sydney. Um, but the concept behind this live stream is we are traveling virtually together. Um, so for people that might be wondering when I am going back to China, the plan is hopefully around February or March next year. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed that I can be there in the next six months. Uh, we will see. Um, okay, so today we are traveling to Xi'an, which you probably already know since uh, the cover image is very much a Xi'an, travel to Xi'an with me. Um, so you've already probably heard of Xi'an before. Uh, you may have even been there. Um, although a lot of people who do go to Xi'an are kind of mispronouncing the name as like Xi'an or Xi'an. Uh, so just a bit of an FYI, in Chinese, the X, the letter X is more of a S sound. Uh, rather than a z sound. So anyway, Chinese lesson over. Xi'an, Xi'an, that's where we are going to be going today. Um, so it's just one of those places in China that are on the usual tourist trail, um, along with Beijing and Shanghai. If you've been to China on like a one or two week itinerary, odds are you have been to Xi'an. And that is because Xi'an is the home of the Terracotta Warriors, which is something that a lot of us have learned about at school. I know I learned about this, uh, the Terracotta Warriors when I was uh, in primary school. It's super, super famous. But uh, what you may not know is that Xi'an is famous for a lot of other things as well, as well as some super fascinating ancient and modern history. So stay tuned for today's stream. I'm going to take a bit of a deeper dive into it. Um, just first up, I just want to say that this live stream wouldn't be possible without my friends at the When Koala Meets Panda YouTube channel. Um, they've helped me find today some people in Xi'an who are going to be taking us around on our virtual tour. So today we have rustled up a virtual tour guide, uh, sorry, not virtual, a professional tour guide. Uh, we've got an international student as well as an expat who is currently living in Xi'an. So huge thanks to the When Koala Meets Panda channel. Um, if you're interested, you can follow their channel in the link below in my description. Okay, so I'm sure you're all very interested to know what we are going to be doing and seeing today. So I proudly present to you our travel itinerary. So first up today, we are going to be uh, visiting the Terracotta Warriors. Of course we are. How could we do a live stream and travel to Xi'an and not go and see the Terracotta Warriors? So we have got a professional tour guide who is currently standing by at the Terracotta Warriors who is ready to give us the whole spiel about these very, very famous, um, this very, very famous place. Um, so secondly, we are going to be doing a food tour along Hui Min Jie, which is the Muslim quarter of Xi'an. Um, if you know anything about me, you know that, that there is a very special place <laughs> in my heart for sensi food and the food of Xi'an. So stay tuned for that one. Make sure you bring snacks, as I said. Um, and then we are going to be ending our live stream with a bit of a tour around the International Film Festival. Um, and that's happening at the moment in Xi'an over the this current week, which was really good luck. So we're going to be checking that out as well. So it's going to be jam packed. It's going to be fun. Um, apologies in advance if we run into any technical difficulties, maybe some slow internet speeds. I've been doing my best this week to make sure that the places that we're going to be going do have okay internet. So just fingers crossed it all goes smoothly. Don't know what's going to happen. But yeah, um, that's the, the admin for this live stream. Um, but before we cross to our first friend over in Xi'an, I wanted to share some of the photos that you guys sent me about your time in Xi'an. So um, a, about a week ago, I reached out on my Instagram um, to my Instagram followers asking if they have any photos or memories or stories about Xi'an. And I did get quite a few replies. So I wanted to share those with you. So the first one, uh, we have a little message from Carl Guy. And he says, hey. 
Uh, so I was in Xi'an at the end of 2017-18, volunteering and teaching English around Xi'an and Weinan. I absolutely love the place, food and culture, especially the food. I think I ate noodles for breakfast, lunch and dinner for three weeks. I can relate. Uh, but it was incredible. We spent Christmas and New Year's there. We got KFC for our Christmas turkey. <laughs> That's very inventive, Carl. I love that. Um, it's such a beautiful city with such lovely people and fascinating history. Um, also, the walk around the city wall was so much fun. I went with another volunteer who I really didn't speak too much and we bonded over how amazing the city was and ended up riding around in bikes around the wall. So, um, riding around the city wall is actually one of the features and one of the must do things when you're in CN. So, um, there were quite some photos that you guys sent to me of you uh, cycling the city walls of CN. So, this one is from Migo with some of her friends um, on the city walls there. Um, this is from Aho02, who's doing some poses on the city wall. Love it. Um, so, basically, for you guys who don't know, um, the city walls, so once upon a time, back in the very, very olden days, Xi'an as a city as a whole could all fit inside the city walls. But now, as you can imagine, Xi'an has grown quite a bit. So um, Xi'an is outside the walls as well as inside, but, you know, the traditional city walls still remain and you can walk around the whole thing, you can cycle around it, which is what a lot of people do when they are in Xi'an. Um, here's another photo <laughs> from uh, Jeanette, who has gone on a tandem bicycle ride, which is something you see so much of um, on the city walls. Um, I find it hilarious. I can't think of something worse to do. It just looks so uncomfortable, uh, the idea of doing a tandem bike ride, but you know what, never say never. Um, guess who else went to the city wall? You may recognize this guy here. You know who that is? That's my dad, yay! So this is my dad and I on the city wall, and actually, um, I wanted to bring my dad into the live stream. So, Dad, welcome. Have a seat here. Oh, thank you. This is my dad's first time on live stream. Hello, everyone. Oh, very nervous. Yay. Oh, hello. <laughs> Ni hao. Ni hao, ma. Yes. I'm teaching Dad a bit of Chinese, but um, I thought it would be good to get you on this live stream uh, for our introduction because we were there together. Yeah, we backpacked. 20, we back backpacked together, and Xi'an was one of the places we went together. So. Oh. We were there for what, like two or three days? Two or three nights, yeah. And um, we persevered and we went um, on We to... had to go, remember it was raining. It was raining, so and you can see here. <laughs> we thought we weren't going to go on it. I'm so glad we went on the bike ride. You've <laughs> got to go on the bike ride. Yeah, it's so much fun. Even if it's raining. Yeah. yeah. So that was really worthwhile um, doing that. And we also saw quite a few other places together, which we will get to in a second. I'm just going to get through some of the other memories that people have sent me. Um, Anybody can bike ride it. Look how flat it is. There's it's no so hills, it's just flat. <laughs> it's so it's the flat. easiest bike ride. <laughs> it, it really is. And um, it's actually quite long. I think if you bike ride around the whole thing, it's at least, what, an hour or so? Yeah, or it's, I can't remember the, the distance, but it yeah. was, yeah, it's a good bike ride. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There's someone here that's saying he is eating a Roger Moore, a Roger Moore. A Roger Moore. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we will be seeing some Roger Moore later in our live stream today. That I is just, for sure. I'm watching up for the food baby. I'm just trying to, <laughs> you know, I've been eating all these nice things. Yeah. So I'm going to turn on the fan. It's a bit hot. It is a bit hot. Yeah. Just it's a lovely day in Sydney at the moment. It's the what, 27, 28 degrees? It's Beautiful. approaching 30 degrees and oh, 30 I am degrees. Oh. really boiling up here. Um, so back to our photos here. So this is, yeah, this is us on the, on the nice. city walls. One of my favorite photos of us. Yeah, I've got a, that blown up. You gave it to me for a, a, yeah. a Christmas or a Father's Day. Um, and then, so this is a photo that What's Up Vera sent to me. She sent me some absolutely gorgeous photos, um, from CN. And I, re I really think that CN is just, it's like Rome because I don't think there's anywhere else except Rome where you're walking around the city and so casually there'll just be some really, really old building just hanging out there. And I love this moment that Vera has captured of the bell tower here. At least I think that's the bell tower. There's also a drum tower. Drum tower yeah. And I always get confused because they look quite similar. Awesome. But um, yeah, it, you're just chilling out and you, you, you know, this mad modern roundabout and you've got this almost thousand year old yeah. building it's just brilliant. hanging there. And so everywhere you go in Xi'an, you just come across these, you know, ancient alleyways and yeah, I guess the the biggest equivalent I can think of would be Rome. Um, 
So yeah, okay. It's, they're lit up at night. They're, they look yeah. spectacular lit up. At night. So if yeah. you're there, you have to go here at, go night at night. Yeah. Because it, I should have got a photo of that. But yeah. it's you can Google it. It's really, really nice. Yeah, really nice. Yeah. Um, and it's, everybody's it's crowded and there's a big piazza, isn't there? And yeah. Everybody was shooting up those, those <laughs> yeah. flying lights and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, so you may remember this place, Dad. We went here oh, together. Yes. So That's, um, the market. Yes, so this is the Muslim street. Yeah. Um, it's called Hui Min Jie. And so this is a photo from What's Up Vera here on the left. And um, you can just see it's this very long road full of amazing Xi'an food. Um, we're going to go into this a lot later in the live stream, so I might get you look back that later. One, that one's, it, look, it's almost empty there. It's raining. It's almost empty. It's yeah. so much more crowded than that. Yeah, so this is a uh, photo that I took on Hui Min Jie. Yeah, that's a bit more. Like when it wasn't raining and that's kind of what it looks like. Yeah. Um, it's very, I don't know, the Chinese word, very lively. Everything, it's, it's all bustling and it's a real sensory overload. Like you've got the smells mm. and you've got the sights and there's always something happening, all the noises. It's, it's crazy, but it really, really fun. And you've got some amazing food there. So I had some people actually send me some foods that they ate on Hui Min Jie. We've got um, nice. a lot of meat on stick options. There were a lot of meat on sticks options, yeah. Yes. And there's also, okay, so I wanted your guys' help in the live stream here because I had this cake. It's like a sponge cake and they serve it on sticks, but I don't know what the name of this is, but I really want to know. So please comment if you know what the name of this thing is. Um, so I'll keep out in the for an eye out in the comments for that. But yeah, this is probably yeah. what you remember, yeah. Dad. A lot of meat on sticks. And the rubbish bins overflowing. Overflowing. With sticks. With sticks. Overflowing with sticks. <laughs> Um, so this, I love this photo here that uh, Tina Perstrada has sent of her, I guess her sons eating yeah. the yang rou chua, um, the, the meat on sticks. We should have got some. Yeah. Um, well, I got them the second time I went, I know, but the first time we went, I feel like and... we didn't know much about sea and food at yeah. all. Um, anyway, I love this photo here, which I, I think it's, uh, uh, Tino's daughter, um, posing with a terracotta warrior. I think it's so cute. That's a general, I think. If I'm not mistaken, that maybe somebody in the comments can say. Yeah. But I think the general, the, the one that's second in charge, he stands like that and he's meant to have a sword, but yeah. he lost his sword. So he's actually standing on his sword. Or not standing on his sword, but leaning yeah. on his sword. So we've got some comments here about what that cake thing was. Um, cake pops. Green bean cake. We've got some cake pops. We've got someone who said it's cheddar cheese on a stick. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it was uh, it was cake. Um, Green bean cake. Oh, jengal. Oh, thank you so much for providing the pinion for us there, jengal. Um, cool beans. Um, so, <laughs> mum actually sent me this photo this morning. Uh, you know, your wife, oh, my oh, mother. Okay, yeah. Yes, <laughs> the silly root Thailand fish. Uh -huh. uh, mum pictured a bit of um, a bit of Chinglish in Xi'an, and she sent that to me this morning for my live stream. Really. I thought that was pretty hilarious. <laughs> Um, and these are people lined up for the one and only Rojamo, which you probably oh, know about, Dad. Yeah, I know. We should have had it. Yeah. Well, we are totally going to go back We're to the one day there and, and try have it. The, the real deal. We've, Although the one we had was pretty much a real deal, the Rojamo. Oh, Dad, look, someone said he, you're correct. It was the general. It is a general. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you know more than I do. <laughs> you know We've more. got the general downstairs. We bought the general. <laughs> That's how I know the general. Because when, when Joe, when we went, We've got a real, authentic copy of a terracotta oh, really? So do I. Look, I bought them here. I have a couple of little. Yeah. I got these outside the terracotta warrior um, tomb site. They're cute. Yeah. Well, we've got we've got one that's about that big. It's not full height. <laughs> yeah. But it's about a third height, I think. Yeah. Um, and it's so cool. If you like it, I did a May pie. Oh yeah. And people can see me doing my archaeological dig to unwrap it. <laughs> it's real. It's really funny. Oh man. <laughs> So um, here's a Rodamo. Ro that's, Ro that's me oh, with yeah. the Rodamo. That's in Xi'an the last time I was there. Um, so because this is known as the Muslim street and there is a very large Muslim population in Xi'an, um, most often when you get Rodamo in Xi'an, it is made with beef. But when you're outside of Xi'an, I've kind of noticed that it's mostly pork. Uh, mostly pork. Like the one yeah. that we had in, um, in Sydney was made from pork. Um, so, yeah, yeah, a bit of trivia there. Yep. Um, so this is a message from Mego, who said she just came back from Xi'an last week. She had an amazing trip seeing the city wall, Muslim street, and terracotta warriors. Definitely felt the busyness traveling during Golden Week. Oh, my gosh. She wow. was traveling during Golden that Week. You nice. are brave, um, Mego. Very, very brave. Yeah, very brave. 
Um, Very busy. We had a three hour drive back from the Warriors to the city center, wow. but Funny. luckily we made good friends with our friendly DD driver. Yeah. Uh, we also stayed in a super cute hotel, uh, blah, 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 blah. Fascinating city with so much culture and history. Um, feels super cool. Nice. With tons last of cafes week. and bars. Last week she wow, was there. she's traveling last week. Yeah, so in China it's all kind of opened up again. Has she come back to Australia or? She's not Australian. Oh, not this Australia. is just on my Instagram. Oh, on the Instagram. So she's okay. in, in Sian, oh, Sian, in China, in at, the China at the moment. So last week was Golden Week. So it's like this exodus wow, yeah. of travel in China. Like so much yeah. travel happening. So. I feel uh, very, uh, whoever travels during Golden Week to yeah. somewhere like Xi'an, that's very popular, you're very brave. Um, so this is her eating Biang Biang Mian, um, and this itself is a feature of Xi'an. Look at those juicy nudes. Um, this is uh, my friend Ding. Um, oh, it's Ding. It's Ding. Uh, Hi, in, Ding. <laughs> she's not, it's just a photo, Dad. <laughs> oh, just a photo. I don't, I don't. And um, she's even not moving, Jean. <laughs> Why won't she answer me? I don't know. She's so rude. Um, so she's eating some yum yum yen here, and I just wanted to also show. This is the character for Byung. Oh, um, that's right. Yeah, it's the most complex character in Chinese character system and I found it really funny whenever walking around you see you know like normal character normal character and then suddenly biang biang just this like craziness of strokes I just thought that was hilarious um all the time oh oh look here is Mego, who took oh, the photos. Yeah. Hey, hi, oh, hi, hi Megan hi Mego. she said I'm oh, from she's Scotland, Scotland okay and um have a work holiday during golden week and I never want to miss an opportunity to see more of China. Right. That's so true. Like, yeah. if you only have that week, you've, you've got, got to make the it. most you've of it. You've got to do it. Stay in the stand in the queue. Yeah. Oh, we'll stay up through some queues. Oh my gosh. Three or four hour queues. Well, I think we went to Huangshan during a national holiday. Oh yeah, that was crazy. And we were in line for what, like three or four hours. Three or four hours. It was ridiculous. I yeah. thought that line would never end. Um, okay, this is another photo from Stefan. Uh, he took some amazing photos in Xi'an. Um, that really captured the vibe awesome. of Kui Min Dao. I really, really love these photos. So um, you can kind of get the vibe of um, Xi'an, um, the Kui Min Dao from these photos. You can yeah. see the carcasses of meat here that I'm pointing to. Um, lots and lots of meat. Um, it's really, really good. Vegetarians beware walking down the street. Um, this is me on Kui Min Dao. And this is actually one of the um, surprise favorite dishes that I tried. Um, when I was there. So basically what it is, it's, I've never seen anything mm. like it. They give you this bread, which is the same kind of bread that you use to make rojiamo, and then you uh, take the bread apart in little tiny pieces, like teeny, teeny pieces, and then you put it in your bowl, and then the waitress or waiter will come around and pour the soup and the meat and the oh. noodles into your bowl. So it becomes this carby, amazing, oh. I'll take you to and eat is it. Is it nice? It's incredible. It's so, so good. See, things it's, like that, we they're so different to yeah. what we have, and it's <laughs> I've learned they're they're good. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Like I never would have known a dish like this existed um, until someone told me about it. And you know, you have to be out, put yourself out there, and be yeah. willing to try. My dad used to do a lot of traveling, and he always said, "Eat what the locals eat," because yes. they know what's the nice things. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but, truer words never spoken. Yeah. Um, so that was my young girl Palmore, and oh my gosh, oh Dad. this, oh I know what's coming up now. So guys. This is the, the plank infamous walk. plank walk. So, um, okay, so let me just explain what this is. So basically there is a mountain area very close to Xi'an. It's called Huashan. I don't know if it's technically Xi'an, but it's very close to Xi'an. But go there. Go you there. have to go Definitely. there. You have to go there. Because it's home to this plank walk that you may have heard of before. Um, this is famous for being the most dangerous mountain in China. And um, we've got lazy home food here who has sent me some of her photos from climbing Mount Huashan, the plank road in the sky. It was definitely a big bucket list tick. So it's like a kilometer. Up. Look at this. You're walking on the chain and it's a kilometer up. It's not kilometer just up. like. You're not going to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I suppose anything over 10 meters <laughs> doesn't really matter. But you're going to fall for a kilometer. You're going to know for a long while. Oh, I oh really messed up. <laughs> oh, my God. And look at that. It's her feet there. And that's oblivion. Um, and so this is another photo of her struggling around oh, the side of face, the mountain yeah. to get on this She's plank brave, walk. Very that brave. makes me feel ill. Yeah. Like, that makes me feel the ill. The scary part is when you've got to pass somebody. So somebody's oh, coming yeah. back the other way. You've got to actually unclip your safety belt and put it on. And for oh that minute, if you, I don't know, that's, that's crazy. Well, we've got another photo yeah. here from Chris Renwick. 
um, who had who did the plank walk as well. He posted this on his Instagram. Look, does this little tiny plank? Oh, no, plank look how here. he's just standing with his back to oh, it. Oh my gosh, that's brave. very brave. Um, um, and people <laughs> lean over. Look at that. I could could I could not do that. So it doesn't look that it's that high there. No, but it, it is really high. It's, it's really in a high. Ravine. It's really high. So we went to Hua Shan together. Here so this is us. And apologies for the saturation. I was really obsessed with this saturated mode on my camera back then. So we were little orange people for yeah. the entirety of our stay in Xi'an. But this this mountain is much more than just the plank walk. Yes. Just the walk is spectacular. It you is. walk up these little little knife edge um, paths. Yeah. Uh, you do your good workout on your oh legs. Oh, my gosh. It was so intense. So it's much more um, than just the plank walk. Yeah. And we remember we wanted to do the plank walk, right? Yeah. Wow. Well, and and oh, no. <laughs> I wanted to do it, and I wanted to see if we could force you I into doing it. I wasn't sure. But um, there was a huge line, right? And like we five get, hours. We had to get a bus back to Xi'an. Yeah, so, we so you know. Oh. But please, wait for our... Upcoming, well, one day, I hope one day we can go back to see Anne together and oh, do that plank walk. I don't know walk. if I can do that. Man. Oh, Dad, think of the content. Oh, oh that would be amazing. Not, not worth dizziness. <laughs> yeah. But we did another thing. We did another thing, which is this. Look, and she was crazy. <laughs> so look at this. They're, all there was in terms of protective equipment is this little rope it's that you can see rope. It here have been, even, and that she went got around right right my waist. Edge. I went right to the edge and below this is a drop of like a kilometre. It was crazy. So I was like, oh, my gosh, yeah, do it for the gram. And Get all, in the, there. all the locals, all, all the uh, Chinese people were around yeah. taking photos and I was saying, Amy, Amy, get back from the edge. And they were, they picked up on that and they were all going, Amy, 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 Amy. <laughs> <laughs> and so she had like a photo shoot. There was about 100 people taking photos of her. And Dad was super scared of me going and doing this because right before I went out, there was this lady who oh. decided it would be a good idea to do some yoga poses. And I kid you not, she was this close from falling off the edge. She was getting into this position and she kind of rolled forward. And, oh, my gosh, we were peeing our pants. And... So I was like, oh, Dad, come on, you've got to try it. Dad was kind of like, yeah, no, no, I don't want to die today. But we got him out there. This is Dad. On the yeah, look how <laughs> I'm not leaning <laughs> too much that way. I'm sort of, yeah, I got it. better than that. And I got, look, you were so happy. No, I got a better one. I was sitting up. Yeah. I did, I did sit up. But, but look, you were so happy. I was happy. happy. Yay, I did it. Yay. Um, but, yeah, that was um, that. And, okay, so a lot of people obviously showed me photos of um, the Terracotta Warriors. So this is a photo from What's Up Vera. Here's a photo from Aho 2, very, very famous site. Um, here's another one from What's Up Vera. And here is one of us at the Terracotta are. Warriors. So we saw it. We battled the crowds. We got in there. Um, so, Fantastic yeah. cultural thing. And you've got to see that. But equally for the natural beauty of yeah. the... the Huashan. Yeah. Um, you've got to go and see Huashan. It's great. It's a great walk if you're into walking. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the cultural, the terracotta warriors, you've got to see it. Yeah. Buy one. Yeah. But, um, oh, yeah, buy them. Get yourself some uh, terracotta warrior to take it home. Um, so now, very appropriately, um, we are ready to go to okay. our first destination in Xi'an. Um, which I'll get out of the chair. Oh, thanks, Daddy. Um, it will be the terracotta warriors. Bye. Thanks for joining us. I'll get you back later to eat some Rojalmo with us. Okay, huh? good. Yeah. yeah, we're going to the food street and getting Dad's favourite snacks. So we are now transitioning to our first segment um, where we will be crossing to Eric. Eric is a professional tour guide in Xi'an. Um, he takes around international guests, um, so his English is right on point. And uh, he's going to take me around um, to see the Terracotta Warriors. Um, so I'm just waiting for him to join. And I think he is here. Hi. No. Hi. I'm here. Hello, Eric. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> How hey. are you? I can hear I'm you. Good. Can you hear How me? Are you? Okay. Yeah, very, very well. So, yeah. Show us yeah, where you well. are I'm right see now. You. Yeah, I'm just behind me, terracotta soldiers, just right there. You can see, wow, it's pretty good. It's pretty. It's huge. Yeah. But so today you're in was. Uh, month, right? Yeah, but still very busy. Yeah. So, so how long have you been a tour guide in Xi'an for? Oh, God. Since I was graduated from the university, yeah. uh, my, more, than, more, than, more than 10 years, I think. And, okay, how many times do you think you've been to see the Terracotta Warriors? Ballpark oh, ter oh, Terracotta Warriors? Uh, about uh, 100 times per year. <laughs> oh, my God. 100 times per yeah. year. That's crazy. Oh, 
100 times per year, but ac uh, actually more than 100 times, maybe 150. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. I, I, it's so busy there all the time. Is it busy there today? Yeah, it's so busy. Yeah, so busy. Yeah, today is also so busy. Yeah, like uh, you can see the people there. Yeah. Just behind oh. me. Wow. Yeah. A lot busy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So every Crazy. day, every day, this museum have uh, yeah more than 20, 30,000 visitors come here. Yeah, it's quite busy. Wow, that's incredible. Um, so yeah. you're a professional tour guide. So do your thing, Eric. Tell us about Xi'an. Tell us yeah, everything. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, I will give you some information of uh, Xi'an, the ancient city, and very called warriors, of course. And, uh, you know, as you all know, Xi'an is the oldest and one of the uh, important cities in China. Have yeah. a lot of history back then. So more than 3,000 years history. And wow. it was a it was the capital of thirteen Chinese dynasties, wow. and uh, that that is means over uh, seventy two emperors choose this place as the capital. Yeah, wow. seventy two so emperors. Of all of China or the capital yeah. of northern China? Uh, so actually, thirteen Chinese dynasties. The most of dynasties, most yeah. of the dynasties in Chinese history, they choose this place as the capital. Wow, so Xi'an must have like 2,000 or more years of history, right? Like it's a really oh, old yeah. city. Yeah, really old city. It, it is sad that Xi'an was, the, Xi'an was the one of the oldest city in the world. Wow. Yeah, Crazy. and of course, the, of course, the oldest in China. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that the first, like the first emperor was in Xi'an, right? Yeah, first emperor in Xi'an, mm -hmm. and the, these soldiers all belong to the first Qing emperor. And Crazy. In, Chinese, we, in Chinese, we call him Qin Shi Huang. Yeah. First Qin Emperor. You know that, yeah. I know that. Yeah, he's, I learned yeah. about him when I was like in, in high school. We learned about him and how he's one of those figures in history that did yeah. a lot of good things, but also a lot of bad things. Um, yeah, a lot of good things, a lot of bad things. <laughs> yeah, but mostly good things. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, yeah. So because the, this is emperor, the first emperor unified the whole country. Yeah. And established wow. the whole country. Yeah, in 221 BC. That's uh, more than 2,000 years ago. And wow. this is a pretty, pretty great emperor. And uh, you may know that he unified the country and have a, have a great war of China built and also so built the Terracotta warriors. Yes. Oh, so yes. He, Qin Shi Huang was the emperor that started the Great Wall? Yeah, oh, wow. they build, to build a great wall, yes. So everybody everybody in the world know Great Wall, but uh, not everybody know this wall built by this emperor. I didn't know that until right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Crazy. He's a really he's a really emperor with a good uh, with a very big ambitions. He yeah. was born in yeah, he was born in two hundred fifty nine BC and became the king in two hundred forty six BC. That's a pretty long time ago, before Christ. So this was like 2,000 years ago, more than 2,000 years ago yeah. that this was yes, happening. Yes, more than 2,000, more than 2,200 years, yeah. So, oh my God. Uh, uh, yeah, be, you know, this emperor, this emperor became the emperor when he was only 13 years old, pretty young. That's really young, yeah. And start, and uh, after he became the king of the Qin state, he began to uh, build his own tomb just to follow the suggestions by others. Wow. He began to build his tomb so early. When he was 13 years old, he began to build his tomb. I heard, but, I don't know if this is true, but I heard um, a story that Xin Shi Huang was like really afraid of dying. And he like told people that they need to invent an elixir like a, to keep him living forever. Um, is that true? Yeah, that is, yes, true. Okay. I heard yeah. that it also was the reason he died. So ironically enough, the elixir of life had yeah, like mercury. Yeah, yeah mercury. Had to, yeah, mercury. Yeah, so, so actually, Qing Dynasty, they don't know much about mercury. So that's the reason. <laughs> so, so how uh, long did he actually rule for? Uh huh. How long did he actually rule in total for? Oh, uh, just very, very short time. It's just 30, okay. 30, 35 years. Oh, wow. Crazy. Yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty short dynasty. Qin Dynasty was a pretty short dynasty, but it's a great dynasty anyway. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
Um, so did the Qin dynasty, Qin dynasty end with his rule? So like the Qin dynasty was only 30 years. Uh, Qin dynasty only uh, around the 40 years. Uh, 40 also years. has a his song. Yeah, has a his song. That was called the okay. second, uh, second Qin emperor. First Qin emperor, yeah. second Qin emperor, and that's it. And that's it. Wow. For such uh, a famous only, dynasty, only 40 yeah. years. Crazy. Only 40 years. And he, only 40 years because he built a great wall, because he built the terracotta warriors as a, you know, as a soldier to protect him in the afterlife. Yeah. So that's, so that's why really it was famous. Built. So it was built as to protect him in the afterlife. And yes. I heard there was like so many people that made this. Like how many people oh, did it take yeah. Yeah. all of that? Yeah. Required the 700, 700,000 workers came here to build his tomb, but this tomb took uh, took around uh, 37 years, long time, wow. and a lot of people. So, and then, wow, it's just such a big thing. <laughs> so, it's such, so a big, just so yeah, such a big project. So, this tomb not finished after this emperor died. So, his song actually continued the, the project after he died Ooh. okay so um, so the whole project uh, took 37 years that's a pretty uh, long time for for a tomb yes so was the son buried with him as well in the tomb oh yeah yeah okay. buried everything just like under the palace who will want to bring everything with him include soldiers so uh, uh yeah most of chinese people in ancient time they saw after they died and not disappeared Maybe they just want to uh, rule the country in the afterlife. Yeah. So yeah. that's the reason why he buried everything with him and uh, built the soldiers with him. Wow. The soldiers here, oh. just like uh, like underground, uh, you know, underground uh, security guard. Yeah. The guard and person body. Yeah. So I, I prepared here a little, a couple of photos. Um, so oh. this is Qin Shi Huang. Um, oh, so if yeah. people were wondering what he looked like, um, you know, this is 2000 year old kind of representation, but <laughs> that's, you know, the, you know, who knows if that's what he actually looked like. Um, and then I also prepared, oh wait, no, that's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. Uh, wait, so oh, this is the guy that, um, discovered oh, it, yeah. right? Yes. Yes. So I, I, yeah, I'd like to tell you that in 1974, yeah. in March, 1974, that is the first time they discovered the terracotta warriors. Several farmer digging a well, just uh, digging a while after a really bad accident. They wow. have no idea what they they have no idea what they discovered. They just discovered several pieces, uh, maybe the head, and maybe the hand of the warriors. But uh, after they, re uh, they reported to the government, the government yeah. thought, "Wow, here is a must be very big thing," because wow. uh, you know. All the things, all the stories about Qin Dynasty, Qin Emperor, they are written down on the history book. Everybody yeah. know, everybody know uh, terracotta warriors and first Qin Emperors, but nobody knows the exact location of them. Yeah. So That's just in 1974, they discovered. That's a pretty great thing. That's crazy. I can't. I, I would like to see the the look on their faces when they discovered this. I heard oh. that they were paid very well for this discovery. <laughs> uh, yeah, at that time, yes. But okay. uh, for, for now, we we thought that okay, that's nothing. But uh, back to forty years ago, that's a really oh, really big thing. Has the entire site been excavated already, or is there still bits that need to be? Still excavated. Uh, yeah, still excavated. So uh, on my camera, maybe you cannot see. Uh, maybe I can switch a camera. You can see that. Yeah, that'd be uh, great. Yeah, I can switch a switch camera. Uh, wait a second. Can you see that? Uh, just oh yep, can see it now. Can see that? Yeah, here is yeah. The pin number, pin number one, and yeah. Uh, yeah, you can see this. And this pit actually can be divided into three parts today: the excavation part, the excavating part, and the repairing area. Okay. So in the ver in the very front part of the whole underground army, 
here is a like a exhibition part. You can see all yeah. the warriors here. They look complicated. Yeah. It looks nice in a very good shape. Actually, they all after the repair work. So oh. in the middle section of yeah, in the middle section of the pin number one. So you can see all the warriors. They are still in pieces. Oh, that, okay. That, yeah, that's that's the first time they discovered all the warriors is uh, broken into pieces. Yeah. So yeah. I just put a photo on screen of um oh. some of the warriors there. Okay. Yeah. That's that's better. That's better than my camera. Yeah. So you know. <laughs> So uh, these of the warriors actually broken into hundred pieces. Some of them broken into 300, 400 pieces. It's really like uh, yeah, tips of puzzle for archaeologists to put them together. Yeah, it's really hard. So, so after the back. Mm -hmm. So I, so I was just wondering when the when they were discovered the terracotta warriors they were all in pieces. How did they manage to put them all together in the right way? Oh, like that's a jig. Yeah, like a jigsaw puzzle, like a 3D puzzle. That's really, really hard. So at the back of the whole underground army, you can see some warriors standing on top of the ground. They are standing mm -hmm. there to wait for their pieces. Oh. So we also, yeah, we, we also, we like to call that like a hospital of the warriors. Hospital so, of the warriors. That's yeah, cute. hospital of the warriors. Archaeologists are just like the doctors of the warriors. And, yeah. Uh, when they first discovered, they just move them at the, to the back of the pit and put them together. So nowadays, yeah. nowadays we have a lot of technique things to uh, do this kind of job. Computer, AI, yeah, uh, 3D mode, they can do that uh, by this kind of thing. But 40, 45 wow. years ago, they have nothing. So all the pieces, they, they just restored all the pieces all by hand. That's a really, wow. really difficult job for them. So you need a lot of patience to do that. Yeah, I can imagine. That's crazy. Yeah, you can imagine. You can you see. Yeah, here you can it's see. It's going to take a lot longer until all of the warriors are fully formed. It might take quite some yeah. more years before that's done. Um, but it's yeah, really. Yeah, cool. yeah. I think it's really cool being able to see, like, oh, uh, here. Here, you can, I really love how you can see here, like you've got the ones that have been restored and then that's kind of what it looked like. Um, yeah, what it looked like, it, just like excavated. that, yeah. So it just kind of gives you an idea of how much work went into went into the whole thing. Um, I think I find it fascinating. Oh, that's pretty hard to say. That uh, may take a very, very long time. So I'll yeah. give you an example. The uh, acknowledges the set, they need uh, three or four months to fix one warrior. Three or four months yeah. for one warrior. For one warrior, <laughs> and uh, that, and you have to find all the pieces of one warrior. If you if you still got several pieces missing, so the warriors just still stand there, wait for their pieces. Oh my goodness! Yeah, wow. it's pretty hard. So three or four months just for one warrior. So you know what? In this terracotta warriors museum, now they have a three pieces accessible for the pub for the public. Yeah, but. But this set uh, must be over 8,000 warriors buried inside the pit. 8,000. And I heard 8, that 000. So true, but I heard a story that every single warrior is a little bit different. There are no two warriors that are the same. Is that no true? Two war no two warriors. It's all different. It's all different. Like, uh, wow. you know, 8,000 warriors, but only 1,500 warriors after re uh, repairing work after restored like uh, like this yeah. the ship looks good and you yeah. can see uh i'm not sure can you see that on my screen so some of the yeah. warriors got hand missing right yeah some warriors have had had some warriors didn't have had so got missing so actually yeah. when they I've when they seen. yeah when they made that when they made the warriors they made the warriors had and the body separately okay hand and, and body some separate. of the yeah, head and the body separate. They made it separately. So maybe some of the body look the same or similar, but their head and their face sculptured a real soldier, totally different. Yeah. Wow, so you can see here for people watching at home, like all of the faces are a little bit different. Oh, yeah, they're a little uh, yeah, it's totally different. So you cannot, oh, find, uh, you cannot find the same one here. And that's same, crazy. Can, uh, yeah, that's crazy. So they said that just uh, the warriors here all made by the walkers of Qing Dynasty according to the soldier's face. 
Yeah. Wow. So a lot of uh, uh, that's just a joking. So a lot of Chinese people, especially local people, of course, they would like to come here to see the warriors, to see the face. Maybe they can find their ancestors here. Yeah, that's really, cool. that's, that's that's really, really cool. That's really cool. Oh wow! Some, some some people some people just pointed out warriors to see. Wow, this one looks my looks very much like my grandparents. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. good. Yeah. yeah, that's that's really really interesting. Yeah. Well, the uh, fun so, game of I Spy. So yeah. this is one. Can you tell us this about the one. other? Pit? So there, are, what, I think yeah. there were three pits in total, right? Yeah, in total we have the three pits. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if they have uh, maybe fours or faves. Maybe they have um, a fourth and fifth not to uh, excavate, but not only three pits accessible for the public. Pit okay. number one, pit number one was the biggest one, as you can see, it was quite big. The size of about two football fields. Yeah. But yeah, pit number two and three smaller. Pit number two, uh, it's uh, like half size of the number one. Yeah. And uh, it is a very different part, uh, a different part. Pit number two, have a four different militaries. So they have a kneeling archer, standing archer, a horseman, chariot. But in, in pit number one, you can see that you only can find the standing warriors right here. Standing warriors, yeah. horses, chariots. So it's a different uh, military formation uh, of the Qin Dynasty. But uh, pit number two, pit number two, if you go inside, uh, you cannot see any warriors because that, uh, that pit, uh, you know, for the protection reason, they stop digging. Oh, that because you know the warriors when they first discovered, they all have color. Yeah, not like this. <laughs> this oh, so yeah, you see, you see the warriors here is all like a dark color, but you yeah. can, can, you ima can you imagine that when they first discovered, all oh. of them they have a different painting color. They have a skin color on face. Looks very much like a real soldier. Oh wow. That's yeah, so. Uh, that's, there's actually a, a a comment here that we got from someone in the live chat saying that the color oxidizes the minute it's exposed to the air. So does yes. that mean that when they're excavated, when they're first, oopsies, when they're first excavated, that means that at that moment they have color and then it just disappears after a few minutes. That's, yes, yeah, a few minutes. This other maybe twenty minutes, thirty minutes, color gone. That's that quick. So this used to be all colored. That's crazy. That would have been so yeah. cool to. See. Yeah. yeah, so it was pretty, pretty cool, yeah. So nowadays, if you search on, on the internet, you Google Terracotta Warriors, you can yeah. you can find some colored warriors uh, from yeah. pictures. When oh. I first discovered, I took a picture and the color gone. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, yeah. That's, so that's if you, really cool. If you, if you see the face of the warriors, of the soldier yeah. with, co with color, yeah. they are really, really, you know, well, like a lively face. Oh, cool. That um, is number I one, yeah. I have one more question um, for you. Oh, wait, could you tell us about pit three um, before I ask you my final question? Oh, tell us okay. a bit about uh, pit three. Pit number three is the smallest one. Smallest yeah. one, only 520 square meters, very small. And only have a four horses, only have a, a one chariot and the six to eight warriors. Yeah, like this, you can say four horses. Totally, totally six to eight warriors. And you can see the formation, the layout, the arrangement of the warriors totally different from that in pit number one and two. They stand face to face. You can see oh. the warriors here, they stand face to face. Yeah. According, yeah, according by the layout, arrangement of the warriors in pit number three, and also according by the history book, the stories written on the history book, they said here must be the headquarters of the whole underground army. Oh, headquarters. Interesting. Yeah, headquarters. So, smallest one. But the most important. So here, cool. all the soldier, yeah, all the soldiers here. You can find uh, if you see carefully, you may find the the soldiers, uh, the soldiers here, the warriors here. They all have a very big belly. See, right? Yeah. That yeah. They all middle ranking and high ranking officers. They're not soldiers. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Just like today. Just like today we call the well who have ballet the big potatoes <laughs> yeah yeah heavy. that's so cool um yeah, so, so i have um one more question before we have to say goodbye um yeah. uh so can you uh put the camera back to your lovely face so we can oh. talk face to face 
Okay. Uh, hear that? <laughs> oh, there you are. Hello, Eric. Um, oh, so good. I just wanted to ask a quick question about um, Cian as the starting point of the Silk Road. Could you tell us a bit yes. more about that? Yes, Qi'an was the starting point of the Silk Road. So actually, the Silk Road started uh, from uh, yeah, 2,000 years ago, Western Han Dynasty. That's the first time uh, yeah. one, of the, one of the diplomats, uh, Zhang Qian, his name is Zhang Qian, route to the Western country. So during the Tang Dynasty, they, ha they, ha they have another, uh, another line, the pathway, uh, you know, route to the uh to the middle asia the western country and uh, uh europe uh yeah. so from actually Tang dynasty the western gate of the Tang dynasty that is uh, exactly the starting point of the silk road so from that time from that time uh all the chinese stuff began to you know sell to the uh, other country and from here the chinese uh, chinese merchants start their 4,500 miles journey west to Europe. So wow. here is a really, really starting point of the yeah. Silk Road. That's so cool. Well, That's we great. are going to yeah. learn a little bit more about that in our next session. So I just want to say a huge thank you to you, Eric, um, for taking yeah. us around uh, the Terracotta Warriors. And I hope everyone watching from home uh, really enjoyed your talk. Thank you so, so much. Oh, you're welcome. Have a, <laughs> have a nice day. Yeah. Oh, you too. You too. Talk to you. Talk to you later. Bye, Eric. Bye. 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 That was so much fun. Um, huge thank you to Eric for um, for telling us about uh, the history of the Terracotta Warriors and also a little bit more about the history of ancient CN in general. Um, we are moving on now. Um, exciting times. Oops, I'm going to remove that here. Stop that. Um, so. Next stop for us today, we are going to Hui Min Jie, which is the Muslim street in Xi'an. So as Eric mentioned, Xi'an was the starting point of the ancient imperial Silk Road, uh, the, the capital as well as the Silk Road. Um, so it became a really important crossroads for people throughout China, as well as people through Central Asia and the Middle East. So as a result, um, Xi'an became this hub of diverse ethnic identities as well as religious beliefs um, and people also brought their amazing food with them. So today I am right now about to cross with Daria. Hello, 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 hello. Hey, hello there. How are you? I'm fine. Look where I'm at. I am at the drum tower right oh there. God. It's, it's so behind cute. me. Yeah. Even though it's a bit raining, I think it's still beautiful. It is. And ancient enough. <laughs> Very ancient. I, think, I looked at the stats of that building before the live stream. I think it was built like 800 or 900 years ago. So yes, old. it's really old. And also, as you know, Xi'an is the start of the Silk Road. Yes. It was. And there was an emperor whose name was Woody. He started sending his Chinese missions to all the countries nearby and also even to Rome. Oh, so... Wow. I think maybe it started right here where I'm standing. <laughs> That's very appropriate um, because you're about and, to do a bit of a tour of the yes, and yeah. on my back there is a drum towel, and uh, on my front was before is the very famous Hui Min Street, a uh, Muslim street that they call it. Look, there are so many people. Yeah, Even I'm not sure. enough, I would say, because it's raining. It would be much more people there. They might live stream with us. It they will like be curious. Look, like this lady want to say hi. Look. She want to say hi. No. She's shy now. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to walk you through this a little bit uh, up front. So uh, this street called Hui Min Street because they were lots of merchants uh, from Arabic countries, even from Persia. And... Uh, in uh, times of Han Dynasty, they came here and settled down. Yeah. And they settled down on this very street. So wow. their ancestors are opening shops right now. They are doing delicious stuff. And while we were waiting for you, uh, we bought one thing right here. Oh, what is that? That is a traditional sweet. It's called Jingao or Liang Gao. 
Uh, yeah. It is made of uh, glutinous rice or glutinous rice uh, powder and uh, covered with a jam. Sometimes traditionally they cover it with a uh, rose jam oh and God. some peanuts and some stuff. So um, you are sitting there and what I'm going to do now, I might just start eating it. <laughs> Oh, I'm so mm. jealous right now. I've never this tried one. That. Yeah, what's it yes. like? Okay, Th this one is with strawberry jam. Yeah. It's really chewy. Oh. And it doesn't have really um, differentiating sweet taste because Chinese people do not like really sweet stuff, too much too much sugar. Yeah. So it's mild, but it's nice. It's nice enough. It looks really so, nice. So while we're continue walking and I'm continue eating, yeah. I think I'm going to show you the different part of the road. Yep. So, because I'm eating right now, <laughs> and I don't want to be too too jealous. <laughs> so, we can come over some places they are doing, they are selling here, and we can see what is there, okay? So, it's a traditional yogurt. Oh, wow. Uh, Swan Nai. They yeah. are making it, uh, like, historically, because Muslim people are really good with um, milk stuff, you mm. know? So, yes, there are lots of things that we can eat here. So, also, those are some sweets and some peanuts and some stuff uh, to do some uh, desserts as well. And in Shanxi and Xi'an, is really famous for this one. Oh, what is that? Is that pomegranate? Yes, it's pomegranate and pomegranate juice because it is grown here. The pomegranates wow. and kiwis are grown in Shanxi and they are really popular, you know? Yeah. So, uh, so actually, this is a very famous spot, except uh, some other streets in China and in Xi'an for tourists. So, there are yeah. uh, squid right there. Mm -hmm. And there are dumplings because actually, uh, Muslim people are cooking really delicious dumplings as well and um the, the lightning is not so good so sometimes it's just blurry yeah. right so uh, i'm gonna come back to myself because i finished oh. eating it yeah. yay and also um there are dozens of stuff and really big shops behind me that you can buy all the desserts with your with yourself and like take it home that's amazing uh, but speaking about the traditional things that we can eat in the Muslim street, mm -hmm. I will say uh, there is uh, uh, like maybe 10 delicious stuff that you can eat there. Yeah. So there is a so-called pao mo. Uh, pao mo is a flat bread, yeah. uh, pita bread that's soaked in lamb soup or in beef soup. Yeah. It's really delicious. I'm going to try to show it to you because... We are doing the live stream, and uh, I need to show some people. Look. Oh, my Hello. God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm doing the live stream, and people are eating these kinds of breads. Yep. Yes. And what I'm doing, I'm doing horrible stuff. I'm just filming people who came here to eat. <laughs> but also, you need to say hi. <laughs> hi, they're really friendly. And look at this kid baby. Hey, she's enjoying the soaked pita bread already. So, um, back again, yeah. I and it. I will start embarrassing people right now. <laughs> okay, so uh, actually, except for pita soaked bread, there are also really famous dumplings, and uh, the I will say name card of Xi'an is uh, Biam Biam Mie. Oh my god! You know, yeah, yes. like this. Oh, look Those are really difficult characters. Hey, look there. Yeah. Okay, and also, what is more important is dumpling soup right there. Yeah. So it's very important because uh, all of the people who come here, they're number one, they need to eat uh, pao mo, that is pita soaked bread in uh, lamb soup or beef soup is up to you, right? Mm -hmm. Then uh, there are noodles that we just saw, that is biam biam mie. Okay, also there is a Chinese hamburger. Oh. Which called ro <laughs> which oh, yes, Rojamo? which called Rojamo, yeah. So oh, uh, actually oh, actually I will I will show you hey there. I will show you the street it is right now. 
it's much more beautiful I would say yeah because uh, and also they are somehow they are having uh, some other shops with some strange <laughs> stuff here apparently it's Chinese and Russian shop which oh. I'm not gonna enter okay so there are lots of juices there are lots of things you can drink and actually I think this is really sweet place also, yeah. because it's raining, there are not so many people. Because usually on holidays, you cannot find a place to stand on, not even to walk. Yeah. You know? Crazy. So, so we are yeah. heading we are heading to the place. They are cooking stuff again. Also, Ooh. what is more important, there are cold noodles that are very famous. There are different styles that they can be cooked with. So yeah. uh, look here. So there are some of the sauces you pull to cold noodles. Then there are chopped cucumbers right there. And some of the noodles right here. Ooh. So I'm thinking, how much do you miss staying right there at home? <laughs> and me so being jealous. here. I hate Look at brother. that! <laughs> Hi! I think you will come back very soon and enjoy it. Oh, so yeah. also, as you see, uh, the Muslim street is uh, really green because there are so many trees around. Hmm. And now it is prohibited by the government to get rid of the trees right here because it's a historical object. And Okay. Now, <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> okay, they are making an advertisement of Rojamo, yes, and uh, I think it's a really good one. Okay, so also you can see traditional Xian sweets, which are made of green beans. They're called Ludogo, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay, and there is a beautiful lady here. Okay, she's a bit shy. So, and we are back to pomegranate juice again. So, I think if you come here one day, we can make a competition. How much food after you will say, stop, I cannot eat anymore? I will win, Daria. Oh, well, I'm not sure. Look, I have been living in Shenzhen for a year. Yeah. And the food was so mild and tasteless there that after coming to Xi'an, I gained yeah. eight kilograms eating Xi'an food and noodles. I love it. That Cold noodles, uh, pao mo, uh, roja mo, mm -hmm. um, jingao, the thing where we're eating there. They're yeah. so delicious and so high calorie ones. So if you want to gain some weight, I think it's a great place to come over. You know, I, I agree. I very much agree. Also, this is the place uh, right now. All of the like a while ago, like maybe uh, in uh, two in one thousand and nineties, some time, uh, government tried to change the street and tried to um, try to make uh, Muslim people uh, live in another district because this one is the center of the city. But right now. They are not allowed to move in any other place because yeah. this is a historical object. And also, if you even think this street is not so fancy and maybe houses are old, oh, you are mistaken. They worth a lot right now. Like if you, if one of your ancestors had one of these houses, you know, you yeah. could earn like millions right now yeah. by selling the place. Yeah, because right now, middle of the city. yes. Yes, also there are all, lots of other uh, traditional things, even the durian, which is prohibited Whoa. to eat in lots of countries. <laughs> but here uh, we can yeah. see it. <laughs> yes, and also famous uh, covered in uh, sweet coat fruits, which called uh, tanghulu, bin tanghulu. There are kiwis, as you can see right here, mm -hmm. and nuts and everything here, right? So. Um, I think it's, uh, I'm, I'm can not you sure. ask Dario? What? Uh, sorry, Dan was I'm, just asking yes. that there's um, something that he remembers where there's like a, they've got this big hammer and then they're kind of yes. like whacking. They're pounding yeah. it. I think it's some kind of nougat or something. Um, I don't know. Uh, yes, it's... they have. They have this place. I know what he's talking about. They are making candies themselves or nougat or they make some candies made of um, 
nuts, peanuts, and maybe uh, sunflower seeds, you know. Mm -hmm. And I am trying to find this place because sometimes they are on their day off, but not usually. So, yeah. <laughs> also, there is a big castle that is a oh, mango I, kingdom. I love that place so much. I always go and get a massive um, cup of mango. Um, oh, when I go look. They have even a fountain here. Let me show you one. Uh, okay. Look at this oh. place. Wow. What, what is going on there? Okay, they are taking pictures and they are making their wishes. They write their wishes on the pieces of paper and they stick it there on the top. It, it's believed that your wishes will come true, apparently, if you will do that. So, but it's a bit loud there, so I'm coming back. I'm nice. coming back. But also, it's a really nice place because there are lots of tourists right there. Yeah taking pictures and trying to leave their uh, something, maybe dreams yeah. or maybe hopes for something right there with them. Yeah, that's so sweet. So I see that also, a lot of Also, there uh, is a very famous noodle in Xi'an called Sao Zimian. Sao Zimian is a bit sour because it's made with uh, vinegar. Mm -hmm. They have uh, lots of uh, vegetables there, like carrots and some beans and stuff. Uh, and if I can find it, I will take a picture of it and send it to you. But I now it. I can stand right here and show you the Chinese hamburger scene oh, that we, we were talking about oh. right Rodemo. here. Rodemo. Okay. Oh. Uh, it's usually made with beef because on Muslim street, they do not obviously eat um, any pork. Yeah. right now so these are the things that they are making it from and there is a meat right there which spices that is boiled for a long long time to make it delicious right also yeah. they are doing some corn dogs isn't it amazing corn dogs yeah. and a uh, banana <laughs> hot dogs i would say banana hot dogs. i don't think yes. they're that on the silk road dad yeah. <laughs> oh this is weird but i believe it's still delicious Inventive, like fusion. And also, if you will ask me, Daria, how could, how did you manage to get so fat in Xi'an? I will tell you. It's because of hulatang. Hulatang is, a, um, I will say, hot pepper soup mm. that is made with meatballs, that is made with lots of vegetables like carrots, cabbage, um, some other stuff. It depends on uh, different restaurants, so it will be different. And mm. it is very delicious. And you need to put your uh, pizza-soaked bread, like right there, and mm. you eat it. And usually, people eat that for breakfast. Also, it, although if it's like really spicy, but it's really delicious. If I, I can that. find it, I will show you. Mm. But also, there is another thing that you might be interested in mm -hmm. right here. Is this one is a kind of sweet that made with uh, sugar and sticky rice and they yeah. have some things there there are dried apricots on top and look I and they're they're selling that as well yeah. yes so also as you can see there are qr codes right here mm. that is china is going to pay without a contact right now like uncontactable pay because of the virus thing and everything, so you don't need to hold any money. You just take your WeChat or you take any program you have and you can pay with that. Yeah. Uh, I was talking for a long time. I need to have a break and ask you, do you have any questions? Because if for me, I can continue to talk a lot. I didn't get fed for nothing. Uh, we I didn't get fed for nothing. Sorry, it's so good. <laughs> Sorry, awesome. She's a highlight. Um, so I do have a question for you, actually. Can, can we come to Xi'an and do a tour with you? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Us. Yes. Well, I think you'd be great. I think we will be great friends, Daria. I think we can uh, get along very well. <laughs> and you could get better? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, definitely. Every time I go to Xi'an, I come back, I want heavier. Um, how long oh. have you been living in Xi'an for? Or in Xi'an, I have been just for two years. So it's yep. a really short amount of time to get fed for, right? But I did it. <laughs> so um, in China, I have been for, uh, let's say, tw 10 years already. 10? And 
here I wanna I might not be hearing you very well, but I'm gonna show this great dragon statue right here because it's a new one. Okay. So it looks amazing. Okay, let me do it. Yes. Look at this. Oh yeah. Very cool. Breathing smoke. Yeah. Oh, hello. Oh. Oh. It's actually a place to come. Yeah. To one wow. of the restaurants, hey? Oh, restaurant. it's a restaurant. That is so cool. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. It's a very weird place. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure what but it was. Like class I think it, it was worse to see, hey? Very worth seeing. It made my day. Also, if you think that... Quimindie is just one street. You are mistaken because look at this. There is a lot. Hey, someone is oh. saying hi to you. <laughs> okay, there is another line right there. There are lots yeah. of people and lots of delicious things as well. Yeah. So I think when you come here, you will need at least, let's say, uh, eight, ten hours mm -hmm. to I, when walk I through. Yeah, when yes. I went there, I came back at multiple times of the day. So I went for breakfast, then I went home, I came for lunch, and then I came home, and then I went to eat um, dinner. So, yeah, you have to be very strategic in how to get as much food in your body as possible. Oh, or not eat for a few days before that. You know, yeah. let's go to this side of the road and check it out. Yeah. Awesome. Like, so they all also they are doing a soup with uh, pears and red dates oh, that cool. is sold here. It can be hot or it can be cold. It's up to you. It depends on the summer. Actually, in summer, it's a really good place to come. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah, chicken wings for sure for people who love chicken wings. Mm -hmm. Then lots of dried fruits right here. Oh, cool. oh my god, I never felt so comfortable live streaming. I thought it would be, be weird and it's not at all. No, it's like a FaceTime Look, call. Also, there is, uh, for uh, uh, people who love something tricky and strange, there are some intestines and uh, tummy, I would say beef tummy parts my, my with spices. <laughs> yes. So they are with spices, with onions, with everything. They are boiled right here in front of you. And they are spiced with all of delicious stuff. Also, look at this one. It's chao liang gao or chao liang here. What is this? Oh, I love that one. Chao liang fur, yes. So it is fried with um, sprouts, with pepper. It's uh, sprinkled with some spices for having a better taste, I guess. Oh, and no. now there, there is the mother of the whole Muslim street is all the pastry. Look oh, at that. God. The bread is it so might, good. It might be very delicious. Also, there is a sticky tofu, which is black. Oh, but as it's so not... Uh, yes, I, and it I smells... My, um, I took my dad for his first ever tofu, sticky tofu, a couple of weeks ago. So got a Can video. you smell it from here? <laughs> smell it. it. Through the <laughs> oh. Tastes good. Okay. Yes. So also, there are more people here because it's not a tourist part, and more locals, I would say, come here. Yeah. Mostly. So there are more delicious stuff like coconut juices and coconut ice cream right here. I think maybe the light would not be so great, but still. Yeah. And a uh, very traditional drink is Suan Mei Tang, which is uh, the drink with made with like sour, sour fruits, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and of course, traditional or not, because there's Peppa Pig, <laughs> Croft. <Yeah. laughs> like, dude, is a Peppa Pig <laughs> yeah. right here. And there are lots of small shops and really, really interesting places that you can buy something for yourself, for the memory of Xian, oh, you know, it. and that that uh, character, Biang Biang Mian, oh, the wow. character <laughs> Biang. <laughs> really intense. So, actually, to sum up, uh, this street is really great for shopping, for eating, and it's not enough actually uh, to have just few hours of coming yeah. here. 
because yeah. I think they have so many cultures connected all together. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a really nice place to take pictures, to buy souvenirs, to try lots of stuff, maybe to buy something for yourself and carry it with you. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, g give it to your friends, make a mm -hmm. gift. So that, this is really amazing, a beautiful street. I think you need to come here more often. I will Definitely. go as soon as I can get back to China. I'm going to come and visit you in Xi'an and we can eat and get fat together. Oh my God. No, I, I tried to lose some weight, but I still will eat with you. So, <laughs> okay, I'll eat. Yes. <laughs> oh, I don't have a doubt. I will watch and maybe still join, join in. Good. You know, actually, even though it's raining, the atmosphere is really great because it smells delicious all over here. And uh, there are lots of interesting lights, and I would say traditional cabs, but they are not. They are modernized traditional cabs that they used to have before. Yeah. So um, I think this is really, uh, really one of highlights of Xi'an. Yeah. Also, there are more highlights, as you will see later, and you yeah. told before. But we can do another, another streamline if you want to next time. I would love to, Daria. You have been an absolute treat. Uh, it's such a good live streamer. So much energy, guys. A thumbs it's up my topic, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I can't wait to meet you in person in Xi'an, hopefully in the next six months. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, no problem. See you then. Bye. Hey. Bye. Nice Bye, to Dara. see you. Bye. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. She's great. Yeah, she's great. So she's so good. So oh much. I wouldn't have her as a tour guide. Oh my gosh. I haven't met someone so, so knowledgeable. Well, yeah. Not that I'd call myself knowledgeable, but someone so passionate yeah. about Sian food as Daria. Yeah. I can't wait to meet her in yeah. person and become best of friends. Yeah, she was so full of energy. Anyway, I'm yeah. going to leave you to it. Oh, thanks, Dad. Thanks for joining thanks our live stream. Thanks for joining. Oh, can you turn on the air conditioning? Yeah. It's so hot. I'm burning off. Um, so, thank you guys uh, for watching that segment with me. So, um, that's a little bit about the food history of Xi'an. Xi'an food is just so ridiculously good. I've already made like a billion videos about Xi'an food. Um, so you can check those out on my uh, on my YouTube channel. Um, but next, we are crossing to Romario here. Um, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hey, how are you going? I'm good, I'm good. This so thing good is scary. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs> So, can you tell us where you are right now? So, right now, I am at the 7th International Silk Road Film Festival. And right now, we are at the Xi'an Film Studio, the number three studio, at the World Classic International Film Poster Exhibition. And right cool. now with me, I also have Lilaos right here. And he's going to be explaining and taking hey, us through the entire exhibition and seeing exactly what the World International Classic Film Posters have to offer. But before that... Okay. Do you recognize so, this? Isn't that from like Greece or something? Rome? It's from Roman Holiday, the film. Uh -huh. I don't know if you ever watched it. We're about to learn all about it right now. Also, Amazing. Please take us through. Let me show you guys. Mm -hmm. oh. Wow. wow, so these are all of the film posters from that year of when it was first released of Roman Holiday. You can see the oh. beautiful classic Audrey Hepburn right there. Can you hear us, Amy? I can hear you. I can hear you. All going good. I'll let you know if you drop out. Okay. What is this over here? <laughs> Is that, oh, this is not this is not what she, this is what she wore, but it's not like you know what she wore on that day. It's a, it's a, it's a copy of that, but it's a classic Audrey Hepburn dress. Would you wear something like that, Amy? Is that your style? Uh, no, too much fabric. Too much <laughs> you need to be fabric. A bit <laughs> what about this? This is the real oh. This is the real this is the so real water bit that they use in the film. You can see it right here. Oh, I'll have to go watch this movie right after the stream because I've never seen it before. Um, so You've never seen Roman Holiday? I've never seen Roman Holiday. Shame on you, Amy. Shame on you. I'm but sorry. I haven't seen it either. So shame on us. <laughs> you haven't seen it either. How dare you shade me? <laughs> 
Oh, we've lost Romario. This uh, fun fact, this spot right here is a bad internet area. But as soon as he moves on from Roman Holiday, the internet gets better. Mm-hmm. You're back. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm.
all of the stuff that you would have, I guess, for if you were filming a movie. So you see yeah. all those numbers and all that stuff. That's where you would hang lights. And I guess that's where they would do all like, the flying kung fu and stuff like that. Yeah. Unbelievable. Can you see that clearly? Yeah, no, that's really clear. That's that's really cool. So some of those flying kung fu scenes were, uh, were filmed in here. I yeah, love that. Exactly. <laughs> That's so amazing. That's pretty cool. Oh, this Yongpeng, ah, this Yongpeng, Shijian Yu, ah, Shijian Yu, 1959. So it was built in 1959. It's a bit dark, but these are all photos, right? These are all photos of the time when they were filming movies here. Can you see? Maybe Bruce Lee's in one of these photos. I didn't know that um, Cian had such a bustling film industry, to be honest. <laughs> to be honest, I didn't either. <laughs> That's why you have to come to film festivals. You learn so much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what is this? Oh, a very special ah, chair, apparently. Gollum. Do you know this guy? This is the guy from Lord of the Rings. Of course oh I know who this guy is. Gollum, also known as Schmeagol. Yeah. What did he used to say? Was that a famous quote of his? I forget. My precious. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's it. So, this chair has what? Why is this chair here? Has any chair? Oh, this chair is from the time when the film industry was in its infancy. He was a cameraman. He sat in this place. He was in charge of the whole film industry. So, we now put the chair in this position. It is equivalent to his energy and the whole film industry. Wow. See, and this is one thing I really like about Chinese culture, and I think you like this as well. The yeah. reason why they keep this chair here is because in the past there was like a camera, which is someone who watches over the entire like studio as things are going on, and they yeah. kept the chair here so they could. One. Yeah. Millisecond, guys, bear with us. Keep his sort of spirit alive. Have the <laughs> the guy from Lord of the Rings here watching watching over it as well. That's pretty. I love cool. it. I, this oh, is what I think Chinese culture is so interesting, so full of like symbolism, so full of schmiegel. Yeah, exactly. What is this? Um, we can see. He, he, is at first, ah, is not no film promotion concept. Then, when the promotion was made, he, for the promotion, he made the chair to make the chair visible. He made the chair. 跟在前头、后头，然后连接起来，是吗？连上它的中介画，然后就是为了来宣传自己的电影。Oh, I see. So in the past, there were no, there were actually no film posters. So how would you sort of promote your film if you didn't have a film poster? So a lot of people did it like this. They would just have someone have like cardboard on the back and front of their bodies, and they would have like the film's name or whatever. So this was the ancient film poster before there were film posters. And、oh wow! It sort of looks a bit like a sandwich, doesn't it? <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does look like it, a sandwich. It does look like a sandwich, right? I, I, I'm not crazy. I knew, I knew it did look like a sandwich. Then, 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 七页是为了、mm-hmm. 为了做出来一些，就是因为它是最早的电影海报嘛，所以说这都是一些做旧的效果。那这个是故意的吗？想对，是故意的。<笑> so can you see these ink blots here? What? The ink blots here on the on the poster. Yeah. They did this on purpose because they wanted to like sort of give that feeling of looking at an old film poster because it would be a bit messy. It wouldn't be as perfect as it is today. So、Not、they did that purposely、it. just to give that feeling. That <laughs> so is so tremendous. Like... That's so cool. And then really modern writing on top of it. <laughs> it yeah. Flat, but interesting. Wow. Interesting, interesting. that they've done that. Oh, here. This is the most recent two film posters. So these are the Lumiere Film Institute's film posters from 1895. Can you see that clearly? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that very clearly. These are the earliest film posters, and they were all produced by the Lumiere brothers. So they, it was their film. That made、yeah. the earliest film posters in nineteen in eighteen ninety six and eighteen ninety five. Wow, it almost looks like they've been drawn by hand. I was saying, like, it almost looks like they were drawn by hand. Yeah, but I don't know. Were they? Just show. 会的吗？对，这个是早期手绘的。Yeah, they were drawn by hand. Very good eye, Amy. You could be a film person. <laughs> a film poster person. <laughs> I was trying to find the word, and I just couldn't. <laughs> What about here? 
Oh yeah. Oh, over here, there's also. <gasps> <laughs> Amy, you should know this one. These are all the seven dwarves. Oh, we can see this is a very famous, very famous one. A white princess with seven little girls. Copied. So this thing has a mistake in it. Where is the mistake, Amy? Can you find the mistake? Well, I don't speak Spanish, so um, <laughs> it, I don't it's not know. A grammatical error. Oh, okay. Wait, one second. Let me count the dwarves. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, seven dwarves. Is it that Snow White kind of looks like a man? Is that the mistake? It's a mistake in the look of. Can you hear Wait, us? Say that you just cut out for one second. Oh, what was the mistake? What's, what's the name of this movie? Uh, it's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. How many dwarves are there? I I, I checked. There's seven there. There's seven there. Are you sure? Look, there's one out at the bottom of the frame. So you've got okay. one, two, three. Four, five, six, and then you've got, you've got one down the bottom there. It just the head. Am I the only one in a hundred years that's fascinated with this donkey? Like, <laughs> because a lot of people mistake it. A lot of people don't see it. So originally, for whatever wow. reason, whoever was like writing this or making this haiba or making this film poster, he originally had one, two, three, four, five, six, six dwarves, right? And oh. then this dwarf was sort of a mistake because he hadn't written the seventh dwarf. It's Snow White and the seven dwarves, and he only had six. So then here in this space that was left behind, he made the face for the seventh dwarf. That's why this dwarf is so low, and all the rest are standing. So it was like an afterthought. That's super interesting. <laughs> so nice. now we're gonna look at what is this? This is the smallest oh, film poster in the world. I have very small hands, and look, my hands it's are bigger. Flash Gordon. I love that movie. What? You know this movie? Yeah, I think it's Flash Gordon, right? It's yeah, it's. I think so. I don't know. I'm too young. I'm sorry. We're not in the same generation. How old are you, Amy? I'm older than I look. <laughs> wow. So, this is have different sizes, right? Yeah, this is different sizes. It's very short. You can see the different colors. Also, 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 you can 周一行字儿，所以说我觉得它就是一张最草率、最草率的海报。So this is also, ironically enough, this is also like a, a film poster. But as you notice,、mm. it has no photos, it has no actors, it has no actresses. All it has is the name, and this is why Lilao Shi likes it because he thinks it's incredibly direct, and it really showcases the director's sort of personality. That he didn't care about all this other stuff that people wanted to、yeah. put on their film posters. All he wanted was just the name, the name of the movie, and that's it. I love it. And then, we can see the next one. I don't know this actress. This is the biggest. Oh, is this the biggest? Just do it down, man. Oh, that's the really big. Yeah. High ball in history in the world. Yeah. In the world, ever. In the world. Or. What are you pointing to, Li Lao Shi? He actually has two film posters that these are actually two film posters put together. Because I guess、oh. back in the old times, they couldn't print、yeah. such a huge. Print a, a huge poster by itself, so they actually、yeah. use two posters and put them together like this. So you can see these sort of, you、yeah. see where they differ. So this one is yeah, this yeah, color, yeah. this one's that color.、Uh, so they're actually two different hypo. Oh, that's super interesting. That's so cool. Wow.、Nice. Do you know this this movie? Do you know this film? 
No, I don't think so. I've never, I don't recognize the actor or the actress. Um, and I don't think I've heard of the movie. Cosa si fa per te? <laughs> I think I just butchered what that. What else do we have here? Can you speak a bit louder, Amy? I'm having trouble hearing your voice. Sorry. Uh, can you hear me better now? Yeah, I can hear you better now. Okay, cool. Because,因为前面的海报，它代表了特别的不一致。嗯，然后所以说，当年爱迪生最后对这些所有的海报进行这个重新的定义，它进行了一个尺寸的标准，就是它统一为了一个二十七乘四十一英寸的一个大小。
-hmm. So after they print something, it's the final version of it. And it's the only one that will exist because after that, they're going to reuse this. So they have to, you know, sort of rub everything away and then print something new. So there's no copies of stuff like there are there's no like second chance of stuff. Yeah. If you all of the the highballs here are all like the the real ones and the only ones that exist. That's my point. Oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, and it's a big slab too. Jeez. <laughs> nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's really nice. So now we're going further into this area and we're into like French films, French film posters, Spanish film posters, everywhere around us. There are so many posters. Let me show you. So you can see the Spanish oh, posters cool. are Spanish films over here. Yeah. French films over here. Wow. Oh, this, I know this film. This is the this is the film poster for the first ever science fiction film in the world, A Trip to the Moon. Have you watched that movie? I haven't. I thought you were like a film buff. I thought you knew films, Amy. I feel like oh, I'm disappointed. Food. I know food. I don't know films. <laughs> you know food. You don't know films. Okay. 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 Yeah, that's my area of expertise. But it looks like a really cool See. exhibition there. Um, so do you know it's how long cool. it's on for, the entire exhibition? Do we have one? Do you know how long the entire exhibition goes for? Is it just for a week? I think the exhibition goes for a, a pretty long time. Oh, okay. Half a year. Half a year, Half a year yeah. Oh, so it's almost always there. It's almost, yeah, almost always. Oh, okay. For some reason, I thought it was only for this week. Um, We've lost Romario, but he will be back shortly. Oh, I think I see. Oh, Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. Wow. Nice. And all of her films, all of the film posters for her. That's cool. We're having a films. little bit of trouble. Oh, Are you a Marilyn Monroe fan? Yes, I, I would say I am a fan of Marilyn Monroe. I haven't seen all of her films, but I've seen quite a few. Um, she's pretty cool. Cool blondie. Is she your style icon? Style icon? I don't know. No, probably not. But she definitely is very classy, graceful. Um, definitely an icon. No. You are blonde. Mm -hmm. I am blonde. blonde. She is also blonde. She is also blonde. Your powers of observation are amazing. Thank you. I was I was going exactly for that. Oh, <laughs> look at this! Look at this. <laughs> Amy, do you know what, what is... this is? Wait. Do you know what this I'm is? I'm guessing it's a raincoat from Singing in the Rain. Yes, yes. I want to put this raincoat on. Can someone help me? <laughs> I want to put. This are you allowed to? I am I allowed to put this on? Okay, well, Chama. Okay, try <laughs> I'm guessing it's not the real one. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my god, it feels real. It feels like a real raincoat. I'm very surprised that they're letting you try on the actual one. <laughs> <laughs> must become just that special. Wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is so cool. That is awesome. And you can see all of like you can see the huge film posters for the movie. Wow. Yeah. This this is iconic. My goodness. Very iconic. I think I want to keep this raincoat. Do you think it suits me? Is it my style? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'm yeah. Keep it. I'm gonna put it back Keep for now, but then I'm gonna come back and get it. I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> nice. That is incredible. That's one of my favorite films. When we were young. <laughs> that did not that, you're okay. We're all okay. That did not occur. We were a Are lot they younger. Out now? <laughs> I think they're gonna kick you out. <laughs> I hope not. 
Let's just keep it on the bell note. Nothing happened. Oh, okay. We saw nothing. I saw nothing. Oh, that my... never happened. Look here. Do you see this? I. What is it? Go. Go in a bit closer. Oh, it's back. Terminator. I'm back. I'm <laughs> back. We can touch it. 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 It actually feels like blood. It actually that feels like blood. That's so disturbing. I feel like weirdly oh. nauseous. Like I can see the blood <laughs> on my finger. Oh god. What? The Terminator. Look how the film poses for the Terminator. Very interactive with this museum. Um, They're so nice to me here. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's great. Um, Do you cool, see this? Do you remember cool. that? Huh? What? Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't hear you. I was gonna say a very cool exhibition. Um, it's cool. Like I guess the first half of this live stream, um, we were showing more of like the ancient history of Xi'an and the food culture of Xi'an. I guess this I kind of. You at all, Amy. Are you? Sorry, I think you've gone. Um, your internet kind of cut out a little bit. Um, can you go to like a place yeah. a better internet so we can chat? I think I'm 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 better now. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you flip the camera yeah. around to your face? Sure. Cool. Um, I just wanted to ask you a few questions about like, um, I don't know if you, can you hear me now? Yes, I think I can. Go ahead. Okay, cool. I'll talk extra loud. But um, I just wanted to ask you a few questions of like what life is like in Xi'an. Um, when did you come to Xi'an? How long have you been there for? So I've been in Xi'an. I came to Xi'an in, I think in either 2016 or 2015. I really can't remember. So I've been here for yeah. about four years or going on five years and yeah. life in Xi'an I think comparing it to other cities life in Xi'an is a lot slower but it feels a lot more I don't know it feels very meaningful like I can remember all of my days here and all the time I spend here and because of the way the city is set up where you have a lot of modernity set up with a lot of like the real history of China it feels like I am in China but then it also feels like I am like in like also like a super hyper modern version of china you understand what i mean like yeah. it doesn't feel like a super modern city it feels like like a classic sort of historical place but it also feels super modern at the same time which is like pretty yeah. amazing yeah that's really cool um why did you decide to go to Xi'an to study rather than over other cities in china so i went decided to go to Xi'an to study for because mainly i really wanted to master chinese language and what my sort of, I guess you could say my mentor or someone who I looked up to told me is that if I went to like a very super international city, I would probably spend all of my time speaking English, especially yeah. because I'm an English native. It would just be so easy for me to just keep speaking English. But if I went to a city where it was not too like, you know, like not too foreignized, but also not too not foreign, not 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 too international, but also not too not international. Then I would have, be able to sort of flourish in that environment a lot more. And like yeah. that is and that's why he told me Xi'an because Xi'an is that place. You know, it's very very international, but then also very very not international at the same time. Like right now, yeah. the majority of my friends, the majority of my friends are Chinese. I spend most of my time hanging out with Chinese, going to the gym with Chinese, and so I feel like Xi'an because of the way the city is set up, I was able to sort of develop my language that way. And that's why I chose it. That's why I ended up coming here. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Um, yeah, I, I've only been to Xi'an a few times, but I do get the sense that it is a very modern um, city underneath all of that history. So um, yeah, what do you like the most about living in Xi'an? I'd like to know. I think, I think my reason would be the same as like, your reason. I Anything. Oops, we've lost ya. The guys want like rou jia mo, like rou jia mo, like yeah. uh, liang pi, like all of that. For me, I think honestly, coming from the Caribbean, especially like Xi'an oh. food, was super easy for me to get accustomed to. So. I absolutely love the food here. And to be quite honest, I feel like if I were to leave Xi'an, I would, it would be so hard for me because of the food, because I would really, really miss it, like truthfully. Yeah, I, I miss Xi'an food and I'm not even living there. Good thing that here in Sydney, we have a lot of really good restaurants that serve a Xi'an specialty. So I get my fix every few weeks, but um, yeah, I, I can't wait to actually be back in Xi'an and uh, yeah. 
eat some yeah. really authentic sea and food. Um, but yeah, um, that kind of takes us to the end of our live stream now. But thank you so much for um, taking us around the International Film Festival. Um, it's been really great to, um, to chat with you. Same, it was my pleasure. Yay. Well, chat soon. Um, is there anything you'd like to add before we say goodbye? Um, anything you want to add about um, Seattle or the festival or whatever? I mean, the festival is absolutely amazing. I'm going to end off with like the back camera so you guys can just see the end of the yeah. thing here. The festival is absolutely amazing. You have all of this really cool art and all of these really cool exhibitions. And this is only one part of the festival. So the festival, yeah. the festival is going to continue to go on for the rest of this month. So there's a lot to enjoy. There's a lot to explore. And that's also true for Xi'an as a city. It's a really, really interesting city. It's a really, really cool place with culture, a lot of culture, a lot of things to learn. So I would say, yeah. just to end off, if you ever have the chance, make sure to come to Xi'an. There is so much here and you definitely will not regret it. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. That was a really nice place to leave it, um, to leave our stream for today. Um, so, yeah, thanks so much. Um, I'll chat soon to you. Bye. Right, see you. <laughs> see you later. Bye. Oh, that brings us to the end of our live stream today. Um, that is all of our places we will be visiting. So if you did um, tune in towards the end of the live stream, we did previously go to see the Terracotta Warriors. Um, we went to Hui Min De, the Muslim street, to try um, to look at some amazing Xi'an foods. So you can watch that on replay. It'll be available on my channel. So feel free to go back to the beginning and watch um, watch that. Um, thank you so much to everyone um, in Xi'an, um, to Eric, to Daria, to Romario for taking us around and for being our tour guides for today. Um, I It was so much fun for me sitting here. I feel like I have just been and had a bit of a taste of Xi'an. Um, I do have to say that I am incredibly hungry after seeing some of those foods on um, Hui Min Jie. But yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, and for watching. The chat got a little bit weird towards the end there, but thank you <laughs> to everyone who sent some nice positive um, chat comments. And uh, yeah, I'll take a few minutes here at the end to answer any questions that you may have, or I would also be interested to hear uh, where you guys would like me to travel live to next. So we have done Wuhan, we have done Xi'an, where should we go next? Um, I think uh, this live stream um, was even better than the last one. Um, worked out a little bit more about you know what what where the good internet is that made a big difference. I hope so. I hope that was a bit more enjoyable for you guys to watch. Um, someone here has said travel to Chatswood. Uh, Chatswood <laughs> is a suburb in Sydney that has a lot of amazing Chinese food. Um, you know what? It's not a bad idea. Show people the amazing Chinese food that Sydney has to offer. Um, oh, Nanjing, that would be fun. Um, actually, I haven't been to Nanjing for a really long time. Uh, Nanjing was the first trip I did in China um, after I got there uh, um, to study in Shanghai, but I haven't been back there since. So I went there for like a couple of days in 2014 and I haven't been back again. So definitely would love to learn more about Nanjing. Um, oh, Guangzhou would be fun. Yeah. Some people call it the capital of food in China. Um, we won't get into that debate because I know there are some uh, different opinions on uh, where the best food is in China. But Guangzhou, people are very proud of their food there. Um, big city, lots of big population. That would be fun to go and check out. Um, where else? Someone asked me, have I been to Shenzhen Painting Town? I have, and I even made a video about it, um, about this awful portrait that I got made of my face. So you can go check that out on my channel. Um, very interesting experience. Um, someone said, what about Wuhan? We did a live stream there two weeks ago. So you can go check that out on my channel as well. Um, that was the first place we went um, traveling live together. Um, uh, oh, Chengdu. Oh, that would be good. Do a, a virtual food tour in Chengdu. But I almost feel like that's bordering on cruelty, um, doing a food tour in Chengdu and no one having the ability to like reach through the screen and actually try it. Um, so, oh man, but that would be amazing. I love Chengdu so much. Um, I actually am planning to go back there almost as soon as I'm back in China and make some videos because, oh my God, Sichuan food is like 
has oh, it's right there, right in the middle. Um, oh, Chongqing live stream would be fun as well. Hectic place. Oh, we could go try some Chongqing hot pot together. That would be really fun. Um, yeah, thank you for your suggestions, guys. Also, let me know um, or comment below when this uh, live stream is uh, published on my channel, um, what you'd like to see more of next time, what you'd like to see less of next time, any feedback that you may have. I'm still trying to perfect this whole travel online experience to make it as pleasant for you guys as possible. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope that you did like this live stream today. And I know for me, it was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I think I am going to say goodbye now. So yeah, bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, guys.